Hello everyone, this is David, and today I thought we could talk about game cues while live streaming using the Mix It Up software. So if you're a live streamer and you have games that you play with your viewers and you obviously have some kind of list of users so you know who to play next and you kind of have this fair system, it can get kind of unruly quickly. So uh, Mix It Up is a good solution for this and I will walk you through three main things. The first one is how to set it up. The second one is a neat trick for dealing with viewers who aren't ready immediately when it's their turn to play. And then lastly, some advanced commands to automate the issue of viewers' gamer tags. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this is the Mix It Up software. And if you don't have it installed, uh, I'll include a link in the description to install it. I'm not going to walk you through how to install it exactly or how to set it up initially. It's pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive. You're going to want to include your Twitch account or your YouTube, whatever you use. And then for Twitch, I also have a bot account. So as a Twitch alt account that I own and including that's really cool because you can have your bot do all the commands and it looks all professional and, and it's cool. So I recommend it. So once you open the mix it up software, make sure you navigate to game queue on the list and click enable. Uh, you're going to want to in incorporate some of the commands specific to game queue. And I'll get into that in a little, in a little bit, but I want to show you how it works first off. So I'm going to use the join command and there I am on this queue and I'm going to use my alt account to join also. And here I am number one and number two. And as the streamer, you can move these users around, you can remove them and you can also create a bunch of commands to organize this and have your moderators even help, which is incredibly convenient. So that's kind of an overview of how it works. Um, when you're ready for the first person, you just use a command like Q next, which is the one that I have. It removes them and then it, it, it basically keeps track that way. So uh, I have a certain implementation that I added. So this is kind of my second point, which is the ready command. So instead of just <laughs> erasing them from the queue and moving on, I have something that I've added that's particular to my particular use. So on the top right here, you can see there's something that can be executed when a user joins and something that can be executed when a user is selected. So if I click edit on this, you'll see this message comes up saying, hey, username, which is whoever is next on the list, you have 30 seconds to reply with ready if you're good to play. And then what it will also do is it will store that person's username to a text file called waitinguser.txt. So if I open waitinguser.txt, sure enough, there's my username in that. And the reason why it's helpful to store that information is let's say it 20 seconds passed and your chat gets flooded, you can easily use a command like waiting and it will say right now we're waiting for this user. Once the user is finally responded and ready, they can use the ready command and then um, this I'll go into a bit, a bit later about how it grabbed the username, but this is an example of it helps users that and viewers to be more attentive so they don't just kind of lurk and leave your stream on another tab and once they're turned, they just don't pay attention. There's an expectation around it that you have 30 seconds to reply or you're going to get knocked off the list. So I wanted to show that because it comes in handy a lot for to keep people attentive and active. So uh, one other example of something I want to show um, that's pretty helpful is the fast pass feature. So what you can do is I'm going to go into the command section real fast. I have a group called user game queue. And so these are a lot of commands. So try not to get too overwhelmed by seeing this because you can really get into the weeds and, and do a lot of fun stuff. But I'll show you an example of my fast pass implementation, uh, which is basically, let's say you have a queue of 10 people and then you have someone who's like someone that you want to prioritize for whatever reason, maybe they're a sub or, you know, there's some kind of major supporter or there's some minor celebrity or whatever and you want them to skip the queue and you'll you'll beg for forgiveness for your viewers later. Uh, I created a fast pass system for that. So uh, what I've done is there's a command here called fast pass and right now it's locked to only moderators can use it. And um, so basically it checks to see if there's an arg count and that means what, what an arg count means is an argument is basically anything following the command. So in this particular case, if a moderator uses fast pass and then nothing, it, it's that there's no argument in that. And in fact, I've accounted for that with saying if the argument account is less than or more than one, 
send a message that says, oops, try this, and it kind of gives a, some help text. So the moderator will say, oops, okay, I meant to give a fast pass to this user. And they can at the user, and that person now has a fast pass. And what that means is you're going to save to a file, which is this text file called fast pass user, the arg1 username. And because our argument is always going to be a username, that's the format that works best. So if I open fast pass user, there, there, sure enough, there is the user that has the fast pass, which is pretty nice. So what that means is, let's say this user joins. Let's let's have um, let's have them be number two in the queue. So I'm going to join first, and then um, I'm going to make them the first user. So let's say this say say DVDV Kim was number two user. Well, they have that fast pass that we gave them earlier. So we, what they can do is they can use the front command. Now they're number one in the queue. So go back to game queue. Look at that. They switch positions. So that's an example of a handy thing you can do. Just really cool. So, so I'll show you that command. So I use the front command just now. And uh, that's, that's this one. So what it does is it does some checks through some conditionals. It says, first of all, is the queue enabled to begin with? And then it says, let's check the position and make sure that they're in the queue. Because they have to be in the queue to be at the front of the line. So let's say they are in the queue. We're going to read from the FastPass user TXT. And we're going to make a conditional check that says, does the FastPass user equal the username of the person that's trying to go to the front of the line? And if it does, put them in the front of the queue and say, pass you successfully. You're now number one. And then it's going to erase that file so that the fast pass, they can't continually use that fast pass in the future. If they try to use a fast pass and don't have one by using front, it's going to say you don't have a fast pass to use. And that's because we erased it. So that's an example of some advanced cool stuff you can do. Uh, but then the last point I really want to um, talk about is this idea of associating tags, gamer tags, or um, third party usernames with Twitch usernames. So here's how I do it. So in the standard join command, you can make it pretty simple by just, you know, you could normally include an action under the game queue, and you could just pick user join queue as the action. Done, done, simple. But I like to make my life more complicated than it needs to be. So I like to say, I like to give a warning if they're already in the queue saying, hey, you're already in the queue. So I'll show you an example of that. If I, if I use join, I'm already in the queue. It's going to say you're already number two in the queue. Um, that's just kind of a quality of life, nice to have thing. But the real meat and potatoes of it is game specific username association. So for, I'm going to use Super Smash Bros. Melee as my example. So Slippy tags, Slippy online is the way that you play Melee online. Um, it, a Slippy tag always includes a number symbol and it's one string, meaning there's no spaces in usernames. So to really narrow this down, I can say, is the stream game equal Super Smash Bros. Melee? In other words, on Twitch, am I playing Super Smash Bros. Melee? Is there one argument, meaning, if we talked about arguments earlier, is there only one string after the command join? And then does it include a number symbol? It, all, all args is going to look at the entire string. And if it includes that, if it includes this specific criteria, and they're not already in the queue, add the user to the queue, say, hey, you've been, you've been added to the queue, um, your slippy tag is arg1 text, which is the text they provided as their tag, and here is your game queue position. Meanwhile, you're saving that, you're storing it, associating it with their username. So I'm going to show you that, how that works in real time. Tag erase, I'm going to erase it first. Okay, so if I just try to use join, it's going to bark at me and say, hey, uh, did you add your slippy tag correctly? And the reason for that is, in our database, actually, I'll get to that in a second. So right now, uh, there's there's a database of usernames that only has mine, does not have DVDVKim, therefore, it says, um, hey, we need a slippy tag from you. And the user goes, okay, fine, here's my slippy tag. Okay, so they've successfully joined the queue. Here's their tag. So now what it's done is it's saved a text file right here, you can see, with their slippy tag, which is really handy. Because what that means is, by the time that it's their turn, let's say I say use queue next, Now it's their turn. So now it's DVDV Kim's turn. And while we're waiting for him, we can use the queue waiting command we used earlier to remind us that who it is. And then when that user is ready, they can use the ready command. 
and voila, I'm given their tag immediately, and they're reminded of my tag. So that when I'm adding them, and when they're adding me when they're ready, it's right there, easy to guess. I don't have to say, hey, what's your tag again? I'm sorry, or what's your username? It's stored for me. And the really cool thing about this is, in the future, they don't have to use join with their tag. They can just use join, because it remembers their tag when they entered it the first time, and will automatically add them to the queue. So if you have regulars that you play with often, they don't have to always put their username every time, because it actually stores it. I'll show you what that looks like from a, a logic standpoint. So if the queue is enabled, if the game being played is melee and the user does not include a tag, so what this is is does the game equal melee? Does the argument not include, like basically is it not a valid slippy tag? What we're going to do is we're going to read from a particular file. We're going to say does a text file exist in this directory with their username? And in this case it does. So if they do have a stored tag, add them to the game queue and print this message. Here's your tag, here's your position, because we already have that tag information. If they don't have a stored tag, say, oops, did you add your slippy tag correctly? So what it can do is it can check at any time what the saved tag is and then add them automatically. Now let's say they change their tag in the future for whatever reason, or their Twitch tag changes. They can actually change their tag at any time too. So let's say DVDV Kim does tag Jones. Let's say their tag is Jones zero. So it will give you the feedback. Your tag has been changed from David zero to Jones zero. And if we open our TXT file, sure enough, there it is stored. So users have complete control over what their slippy tag is at any given time. They can erase it too with the particular command that I set up. If they want to erase their name from the database, they can at any time, and then we'll just erase it. But it's really, really convenient and reliable, and I hope that this video is helpful. I know I went through a lot very, very quickly, and there's a lot that I have not covered. If you're interested in kind of digging into more of this, uh, I will be more than happy to kind of do a more in-depth video on all the ones that I use. And also, if there's ever a way to, to kind of bulk share commands in the future, I'll do that. For now, I think there's only a way to share individual commands, which makes things a little bit harder. But if I figure out a good way to kind of share all of them, I'll be happy to share them with the rest of the Melee players out there. And one more thing that I'd like to mention is this is not just relevant for Melee, but like I mentioned before, really any other game that would require a username, whether it's a friend code or what have you, you can create conditionals that say, what game are you streaming right now? Based on that, it can make the decision of, okay, let's go to this directory to find their username instead of this one. So right here, I have a folder called users and tags, but I might rename that to say Slippy or Melee or something, create another folder that says Mario Kart 8 or whatever. And so the, the Twitch usernames there will have the Mario Kart 8 friend code saved instead of the Slippy tag. So you can, you can really do as much as you want or as little as you want here. And uh, the, the, the potential is so powerful. So I had to tell you guys about it and share it. So until next time, I will catch you guys later. Bye-bye.